words of Sri Aurobindo from the book The Mother from the collective works of Sri Aurobindo volume 32 page 212 topic mother's force subtopic faith and the working of the mother's force Sri Aurobindo says is it so difficult to have faith and confidence in the mother even with a little of that attitude the descent was taking place in you if you want to get back your faith and keep it, you must first quiet your mind and make it open and obedient to the mother's force. If you have an excited mind at the mercy of every influence and impulse, you will remain a field of conflicting and contrary forces and cannot progress. You will begin to listen to your own ignorance instead of the mother's knowledge and your faith will naturally disappear and you will get into wrong condition and a wrong attitude. Sri Aurobindo says, put your faith in the divine Shakti. Let your mind be at rest and let the mother's force work. There is no reason to be discouraged. One has to cleave firmly to the faith in the mother's working behind all appearances and you will find that that will carry you through. Question, I can try to call down the mother's force but faith and surrender would require a wonderful yogic poise and power possibly born in, in inborn yogis, I think. For this question, Sri Aurobindo says, not at all. A wonderful yogic poise and power would usually bring self-reliance rather than faith and surrender. It is the simple people who do the later more easily. Next topic, surrender to the mother and the working of her force. Question, is it the Purusha who consents to the mother's force acting in the whole being? Sri Aurobindo says yes. Question, if the Purusha does not consent to the working of the mother's force, does it mean that the other beings, that is the mental, vital and physical and psychic also cannot come to the front to enable the sadhak to receive the mother's grace? Sri Aurobindo says, no, the Purusha often holds back and lets the other beings consent or reject in its or in his place. Sri Aurobindo says, make the central surrender. The mother's force will do the rest. Sri Aurobindo says, in this process of the descent from above and the working, it is most important not to rely entirely on oneself, but to to rely on the guidance of the Guru and to refer all that happens to his judgment and arbitration and decision. For it often happens that the forces of the lower nature are stimulated and excited by the descent and want to mix with it and turn it to their profit. It often happens too that some power or powers Undivine in their nature present themselves as a supreme lord or as the divine mother and claim the being's service and surrender. If these things are accepted, there will be an extremely disastrous consequence. If indeed there is the ascent of the sadhak to the divine working alone and the submission or surrender to that guidance, then all can go smoothly. This ascent and a rejection of all egoistic forces or forces that appeal to the ego are the safeguard throughout the sadhana. But the ways of nature are full of snares, the disguises of the ego are innumerable, the illusions of the powers of darkness, Rakshasi Maya are extraordinarily skillful, the reason is an insufficient guide and often turns traitor. Vital desire is always with us tempting to follow any alluring call. This is the reason why in this yoga we insist so much on what we call samarpana, rather inadequately rendered by the English word surrender. If the heart center is fully open and the psychic is always in control, then there is no question, all is safe, but the psychic can at any moment by wheel by a lower upsurge. It is only a few who are exempt from these dangers and it is precisely those to whom surrender is easily possible. The guidance of one who is himself by identity or represents the divine is in this difficult endeavor imperative and indispensable. 11 September 1934 
Sri Aurobindo says, nothing is impossible if the nature of the psychic being is awake and leading you with the mother's consciousness and force behind it and working in you. Next subtopic, assimilation of the mother's force. Allow quiet and steady will to progress to be settled in you. Learn the habit of a silent, persistent and a thorough assimilation of what the mother puts into you. This is the sound way to advance. As for the mother's force, when one receives it, the best is to be quiet till it is assimilated. Afterwards, it is all right, not lost by outward moments or mixing. Next question, Ramana Maharshi says that if you meditate for an hour or two every day, you can then carry on with your duties if you meditate in the right manner. For the Sri says a very important qualification. Question, then the current of mind induced will continue to flow even in the midst of your work. It is as though there are two ways of expressing the same idea, the same line which you take in meditation will be expressed in the activities. For this, Sri says, if the meditation brings poise, peace, a concentrated condition or even a pressure or influence that can go in in the work, provided one does not throw it away by a relaxed or dispersed state of consciousness. That was why Mother wanted people not only to be concentrated at pranam or meditation, but to remain silent and absorb or assimilate afterwards, and also to avoid things that relax or disperse or dissipate too much precisely for this reason that so the effects of what she put on them might continue and the change of the attitude the Mahashi speaks of will take place. The next subtopic calling the mother's force question. I tried to meditate but I simply had to give it up as the mind would not cooperate. For the Sri this says when you cannot meditate remain quiet and call in the mother's peace or force. Question. Suppose I am in a fix and called on the mother's force which is above me. Now how am I to know whether it, or it is descended or not? Sri Aurobindo says by the feeling of it or the result. And the question. And suppose it has descended and I am doing my lessons. Can I then order it to guard me from the outer influences and simultaneously keep in complete touch with the mother? For this, Sri says, you cannot order anything to the mother's force. The mother's force is the manifestation of the mother herself. Question, I cannot understand how this force can deal with action. For this, Sri says, you think the mother's force has nothing to do with the action or that it is too feeble to act or what? What is the force meant to be but to act? For this, the Sadak says, I am again feeling that depression but I cannot find it. Cause I feel a burning pain inside me and then some part in me becomes very hostile. There is also some inertia in my nature. For this Sri says these are the two difficulties. One of the vital dissatisfaction and restlessness. The other of the inertia of the physical consciousness which are the chief obstacles to the sadhana. The first thing to do is to keep detached from them. Not to identify yourself mentally with these moments even if you cannot reject them. Next to call on the mother's force quietly but steadily for it to descend and make the obstacles disappear. Next question, my mind becomes quiet for some time, but then many absurd thoughts rush in and I cannot quiet them down. Then I feel very much harassed. How long will it take to calm down my mind? For the Sri says, what is still restless and the vital has to be quiet down for the peace of mind. Sri says, what is still restless in the vital has to quiet down for the peace of mind to be even and constant. It has to be controlled, but only control will not help. The mother's power has to be called always. Question. Please initiate me into a tangled form of yoga. I make this assurance that I shall follow your instructions to the very letter and refer to you my doubts and difficulties on the way. For the Sri Aurobindo says, There is no method in this yoga except to concentrate, preferably in the heart, call the presence and the power of the mother to take up the being and by the workings of her force transform the consciousness. One can concentrate also in the head or between the eyebrows, but for many it is difficult. 
all when the mind falls quiet the concentration becomes strong the aspiration intense then there is a beginning of experience the more the faith more rapid is the result likely to be for rest one must not depend on one's own efforts but succeed in establishing a contact with the divine and a receptivity to the mother's power and presence when these attacks of illness come remain quiet and call on the mother's force to remain them to stand separate and not let the mind to be overcome is the first step the next is to learn how to call down the mother's force whenever the attack comes so that the attack may be pushed away at once or at least very soon before it can affect the other vital and the body if that can be done the body will recover soon with the inflow of the forces these are the words of our lord shri aurobindo